Hi, so today we're going to give you a trig expression. You want to transform it into an equivalent expression that is simpler or more useful. And we are doing the proof. So it's the entire thing, the entire process is your answer. Um, so we're going to talk about that. But, but the main idea is we are going to substitute one expression into an, for another expression and then try and simplify. So uh, the, what is it, 10? No, 6, 8. The eight identities at the top you need to memorize. You have to have them. So for now, they're going to be on the slide. But when we get to the quiz on this or the test on this, you need to have these in your head. And for the record, the most important ones are these two. This one is sometimes useful, but not the most useful. Um, substitution for cotangent. This one is the most useful right there. So actually, I don't want to box this because I don't want you to think about this one. I want you to, in fact, most of the time, not think about that one because that one generally takes you down the wrong path. And then this is important. This one right here is the money um, identity right there. That one you have to get in your head. The other three, or these, the first two you should definitely have had, these two, the tangent x and cotangent of x, are new, but they shouldn't be that difficult. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is like sine of x over cosine of x. So if you get stuck, you can remember that, that tangent is opposite over adjacent. This is the new one. This one is super important. If you know this one, you can get this one by dividing by cosine of x, and you can get this one by dividing everything in that one on top by sine of x and using your other identities. OK, so our main idea is we want to show that this sine of x times cotangent of x is equivalent to cosine of x. We will be done when we have a statement basically that looks like this. Cosine of x is cosine of x. The things on the top the, up here, those eight things, are identities. They are true equations. You can add and subtract to one side or the other. What we are trying to prove is not an equation. We don't know if this is true. So I can't, for example, say, well, I'm going to add 2 here and add 2 here. That is not allowed because we do not know if this is an equation. What I can do is substitute and simplify. Substitute and simplify. And I'm trying to make both sides look the same. Ideally, we would make the left side look like the right side. But sometimes we're going to work the right side to get it to look like the left side a little bit if you get stuck. And we're going to do that. We're going to make the right side or left side look like the right side by doing some replacements. So again, I want to replace things. Sine of x, I'm going to leave as sine of x. But cotangent of x, I can replace with cosine of x over sine of x. Now, since I'm doing a little fraction work, I'm going to make sine of x a fraction as well. And anything can be made into a fraction by putting it over 1. Okay, And I have to keep in mind that I want to end up with an answer of cosine of x. I like to say doing proofs like this, doing identity proofs, is like taking a trip. And I can say I want to go to Duluth. And if I get in my car and start driving and I don't keep in mind that I'm headed toward Duluth, I could end up in Madison. I could end up in Miami. I could end up anywhere if I don't think about Duluth. And so the entire time, I want to think about where am I headed. And it's a good idea to check back in. Oh, I'm trying to make this side look like cosine of x, because it gives you a place where you're going. In this case, I hope you can already see where we're going. Because multiplying fractions really just makes one fraction, with the tops being multiplied and the bottoms being multiplied. And if we have one fraction with multiplying, I can cancel my sine of x's. And voila, I have now shown that cosine of x equals cosine of x. And notice, I did not use the identity that cotangent of x is 1 over tangent of x. That most often takes you down the wrong path. There are times when that's useful, but a number one um, strategy for doing these proofs is going to be to turn everything into what it equals in terms of sine of x or cosine of x. So that's our number one strategy. And there's our first little um, Proof. All right, let's try another one, a little bit more complicated. We are also going to throw lots of different variables, right? This is a B. And so we up here we have Xs. You should be able to understand the process with any variable. And the variable is actually important. This is not, if you write this on your paper, you are not going to get full credit. 
That is not the same thing. You need a variable. If you want to change because you don't want to use all our crazy variables to X, I am okay with that as long as you maintain that X throughout your whole thing. But there is a variable. There has to be a variable. You don't have secant alone. It's secant of a specific angle. So I'm going to use the variables that are given because ideally that's where we'd like you to be able to do. But I'm going to use my, my strategy of I'm going to replace everything with what it equals in terms of sine and cosine. So secant of b from up here is 1 over cosine of b. And I'll multiply that by cosecant of b, which is 1 over sine of b. And then I'm going to replace tangent of b, which could be 1 over cotangent, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use sine of b over cosine of b. And then in my head, I'm thinking I could leave secant squared of b, or I know that if I'm turning everything into sines and cosines, secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. And with our squareds, we generally put them inside. Um, the other possibility for this is to put cosine of b in parentheses and put the squared outside, but that is not the same as it's really not the same as that. It's not the same as cosine of b squared. That is not equivalent. In this case, you are only squaring the b. You either need parentheses to square all of cosine, or we put the little square on the inside, and that means that we are squaring the cosine of b and not squaring just the b. Okay, so again, I've done, this is all multiplying, so basically I've made one big fraction, and I can do canceling. There go my sine of b's. And I have 1 over, oh, look at that, cosine of b times cosine of b is cosine squared b, is 1 over cosine squared b. And if you're a purist, you would actually want to turn them both back into secant squared b equals secant squared b. I will accept this, or I will accept this. What I will not accept as a final stopping place is 1 over cosine squared b is secant squared b. I need both sides to look exactly the same. So this, while this is a true statement, I have not actually done my last step of my proof. So that's where I want you to end up. All right, let's try another one. Here we have tangent of a plus cotangent of a equals secant of a times cosecant of a. Hmm. One thing you want to do when you're doing these proofs is think about what do I have? What does one side look like? What's the same? What's different? Well, over here I have two different things added up, and over here I have two different things multiplied. So that's not good. I would like to not have these things added. This is still, I think the left side is still the more complicated side. So I'm going to do my same first step, usually of turning everything into what it means in terms of sine and cosine. So tangent of A is sine of A over cosine of A. And cotangent of A is cosine of A over sine of A, right? I use this one first, and then I used that one right there. Um, and again, I like to turn everything in, so I'm going to think about where I'm going. I like to have a better idea of where I'm going. And so secant of A is 1 over cosine of A times 1 over cosecant, which is sine of A, right? Using these two right up there. Okay, again, I... So on the left side, I have two fractions. And on the right side, I have one fraction. Because I could think about that as being combined and being just one fraction. So I need to combine these two fractions over here into one fraction. And when we want to combine fractions, when we want to add fractions, multiplying fractions is easy. Multiply your tops, multiply your bottoms. Adding fractions is more tricky. We need to have a common denominator. And my simplest common denominator is just to multiply my two denominators. So my common denominator is going to be cosine of a times sine of a. Now, this has a cosine, so what it is missing is the sine of a. But I cannot just willy-nilly multiply the bottom by sine of a. That changes what this first piece is. I want to what I want to do is change what it looks like, not what it is. I want to put it in a 1 costume. And so if I multiply the bottom by sine of A, I must also multiply the top by sine of A. And so I get this bottom of cosine A, sine A. And on top, I have sine A times sine A, otherwise known as sine squared of A. Plus. 
over here, I already have my sine, so I'm going to multiply by cosine. Right? And again, I want to multiply both the top and bottom. I am putting this in a one costume, changing what it looks like, but not changing what it is. So my bottom is cosine A sine A, which is awesome, and my top is cosine squared A. Okay, and I want that all to equal, I'm going to turn this into one fraction, cosine A sine of A. So it's always a good idea. Let's check in. What do I have that's the same? What do I have that's different? What I have that's the same is my bottoms are the same. Cosine A sine A, cosine A sine A. That is awesome. That tells me I'm probably going down the right path. What is different are my tops. Sine squared A plus cosine squared A and 1. So really, I need sine squared A plus cosine squared A to be able to be replaced by 1. It would be awesome if that were true. Well, if we go back up here, cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. Sine squared a plus cosine squared a is the same thing with just different variables, so I can replace sine squared a with oh, oh, sine squared a plus cosine squared a with 1. That is a totally awesome and excellently perfect acceptable replacement. And there we have it. Now our two sides are the same. I have proven that they are equivalent. Um, if you are a purist, I would want to go back to 1 over cosine. My original statement said secant of a cosecant of a, and I would want that equal to secant of a cosecant of a. And so maybe you don't want to work that other side. I tend to work the right side a little bit to help me see where I want to end up, because that is important to know where you want to head up. End up. When, if you're getting lost, think about what do I need this to look like? What do I have? What do I need? What can I do? How can I make them look the same? All right, let's try one more. A little more complicated. So for me, my first strategy is pretty much always the same, unless I have plus ones or squareds. Or, but I often like, in something simple like this, turn everything into sine and cosine. So tangent to b is sine of b over cosine of b. Cosine of b, well, I have a fraction here, so let's make cosine of b a fraction. And secant to b, 1 over cosine of b. So I look, and I'm like, hmm. All right, right side is a fraction with cosine of b on the bottom. Left side is two fractions. One fraction has cosine of b on the bottom. That looks promising because it's the same. This guy does not have a cosine b on the bottom. I would like it to, so let's multiply by 1. And the version of 1 we're going to multiply by is cosine of b over cosine of b, because that gives me a common denominator. Right? Hmm. Oops, I see a little mistake. I was like, this isn't going to work out. I forgot my sine of b. So here we have tangent of b is sine of b over cosine of b. And I still had another sine of b over 1, and then I had a plus. This is going to look a little bit better. So this fraction right here in the beginning has a sine of b times a sine of b, sine squared of b over cosine of b. This fraction over here has a cosine of b times a cosine of b, cosine squared of b over cosine of b. And I want that all to be 1 over cosine of b. Maybe you're starting to see where we're going. I hope so. I have two fractions on the left, one fraction on the right. I need to actually combine my two fractions on the left, sine squared b plus cosine squared b all over my common denominator. And then that is the same by that same substitution we made in the last problem, sine squared b plus cosine squared b, or cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. You really have to get that memorized. And so here we have 1 over cosine of b is 1 over cosine of b. And again, what that means is secant of b is secant of b. And we're done. Okay? Um, so you are always going to end up with two things equal. You can stop here. I would accept this as your stopping point if you want. This is sort of an, the extra mile, going the extra mile. And in between here, you could go right. I would also accept going right from here to that step. However, uh, you, you are writing a roadmap for somebody to follow in this proof. 
the, the goal is not necessarily just this, but it is how do you get there and making it clear for somebody else to follow. Mathematicians, when they do a proof, other mathematicians have to be able to check that it is valid, that every step makes sense. So you, while you could jump from here to here, I would allow that. I am, you have to kind of pretend I'm a lot dumber than I am and that you need to be explicit and you need to show me. I would much prefer steps like this and this where you're showing all the steps. So tomorrow we will do some more of these in class and you'll get a chance to work on your own.